This is Dr. Robert C. Newman in his short course, The Miraculous and the Miracles of Jesus, Lecture Number 3, The Rise of Science and Liberalism. This is our course, The Miraculous and the Miracles of Jesus, and uh, what we might call Unit Module 3, whatever you want to call it. Uh, science and the rise of liberalism. So let's go have a look at that. And we start with the Renaissance. The Greek classical authors were rediscovered by Western Europe with the fall of Constantinople of the Turks as refugees fled to the West. Europeans thus became aware of what these ancient authors really thought and taught correcting the distorted information which had come down through the Middle Ages and the less distorted material transmitted from Spain through Arabic translations. This material included philosophy, science, ethics, history, government, medicine, rhetoric, drama, and poetry, but also pagan religion and magic. <clears throat> the upshot was a great stimulus to the European universities and a growing interest in the ancient languages, Greek and Hebrew. It helped the Europeans to see their own culture in a wider context than medieval Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, but it also reintro reintroduced a number of ancient heresies. Scholars became aware of the nature of miracle accounts from ancient paganism. <clears throat> also about this time, we have the Reformation, a rediscovery of the gospel of God's grace, which had been confused and diluted by centuries of ignorance of God's word uh, due to low levels of literacy, syncretism with local paganisms and worldly society, and institutional momentum of the Catholic Church and monasticism. <clears throat> this led to a renewed interest in what the Bible actually taught as opposed to how it had come to be understood through the filters of centuries of medieval Catholicism. One result of the study was a realization that medieval and modern Catholic miracles had a different flavor than those of the Bible, since Catholicism taught that miracles continued in connection with the lives of especially holy people, there was a tendency to reject the continuation of miracle. Rise of modern science. Think a little about medieval science. <clears throat> Some of the medieval universities had done rather impressive work in physics, showing us that Aristotle was mistaken about the motion of objects on Earth, but it was the work of uh, Copernicus, Galileo, and Kepler which showed that Aristotle's Earth-centered cosmology was wrong and paved the way for the rise of modern science. <clears throat> Nicholas Copernicus, uh, 1473 to 1543, Aware of the astronomical speculation of the ancient world, noted that a great simplification of the technique of calculating the position of the planets could be obtained if it was assumed they rotated about the sun rather than rotating about the earth. Galileo, 1564 to 1642, the first to apply the newly invented telescope to looking at the heavens, showed that neither the sun nor moon were perfect, as Aristotle had claimed, and that a planetary system of moons revolved around the planet Jupiter so that everything did not revolve around the Earth. <clears throat> Johannes Kepler, 1571 to 1630, used the vast observational data compiled by his mentor Tycho Brahe to show that the planets did indeed revolve around the Sun and that their motions could be described by several laws. <clears throat> That brings us to Isaac Newton, 1642 to 1727. Newton, one of the most brilliant minds in history, designed a new type of telescope, discovered that a glass prism will separate white light into its various colored components, invented a new type of mathematics, what we call the calculus, and showed that Kepler's laws of planetary motions could be explained by a very general set of laws of motions a motion which applied to all objects on Earth as well, plus a force called gravity, which attracts all massive objects to one another. <clears throat> the contemporary poet, Alexander Pope, wrote of Newton, Nature and nature's laws lay hid in night. God said, let Newton be, 
and all was light. <clears throat> Newton's influence. Newton himself was a professing Christian, although of an Aryan sort. Uh, that is, that uh, did not believe in the deity of Jesus. <clears throat> he believed in God the Creator, who could miraculously intervene in nature, and he spent a good deal of his time researching biblical prophecy. But many who came after him felt that he explained so much of reality in terms of law that God was not needed. This led to the deist movement in England, and later the philosophe movement in France, which was popularized by the authors of the great French encyclopedia. The rise of theological liberalism. <clears throat> Spinoza, Hume, and Kant, these three men paved the way for theological liberalism by providing philosophical justification for the rejection of the miraculous. <clears throat> Benedict Spinoza, David Hume, Immanuel Kant. We'll look at their arguments in greater detail later. Our, uh, Next uh, module is going to be responses to uh, arguments against uh, the miracle, uh, the miraculous. <clears throat> Benedict Spinoza lived from 1632 to 1677. Uh, Spinoza, adopting a pantheistic outlook, argued that nature and God were two different words for the same thing, that natural law and God's decrees were likewise the same, that God's decrees are unchangeable and therefore miracles are impossible by definition. David Hume, 1711 to 1776, argued miracles from an empirical point of view, uh, attacked miracles from an empirical point of view. He argued that our natural laws are based on, quote, firm and unalterable experience, unquote, and that miracles by definition violate natural law. Therefore, we ought never to accept a miraculous explanation for an event unless a non-miraculous explanation would be even more unlikely. Immanuel Kant, 1724 to 1804. Kant argued that man has access only to appearances and not to things as they really are, so that all theology and metaphysics was unwarranted speculation. Only practical reason had a right to postulate the existence of God, freedom, and immortality, leading to a moral religion of duty only. Such a religion, a form of deism, needs no attestation by miracles, which are thus irrelevant to everyday life, except perhaps to encourage the common people to practice morality when they cannot be brought to do so from better motives. <clears throat> Theological liberalism, as we call it today, is an outgrowth within Protestant circles of the forces sketched above. First, a Protestant revulsion against Catholic miracle accounts. Two, a scientific disdain for reports of irregular and superstitious events. Three, a philosophical feeling that miracles are either deductively impossible, inductively unwarranted, or practically irrelevant. And four, a deistic belief that real religion was moral rather than revelational. <clears throat> Theological liberalism arose in 19th century Germany as a more Christian alternative to British deism and French atheism. It sought to preserve the moral character of Christianity and the better teachings of the Bible, especially the New Testament and the life of Jesus. It is seen in the attempts to rewrite the life of Jesus uh, along liberal lines, also to avoid the miraculous in sacred history by redating biblical books, postulating diverse sources and editors, and having prophecy written after the event, and admitting fictitious narratives and false authorship into scripture. The spread of liberalism. Liberalism spread from Germany into Britain and the United States in the latter part of the 19th century with considerable, uh, considerable help from Darwinism. It came to dominate first the universities, then the theological seminaries, and finally the mainline denominations. It is the orthodoxy of most intellectual and cultural leaders in the United States and Europe today. It is also influential in similar circles in most of the older mission fields. The influence of liberalism. Liberalism has never been as popular among the common people in the United States as among the leadership. Still, it has considerable influence by way of mixture 
even among more conservative Christian groups. Various cults and New Age groups have accepted many of its teachings, and Orthodox Christians have sometimes overreacted <coughs> in responding to liberalism. Well, that's a quick tour of uh, <coughs> the rise of science and theological liberalism, and you can see uh, then the influence there of the rejection of the miraculous, uh, which is, after all, the topic of our lectures here, the miraculous. This is Dr. Robert C. Newman in his short course, The Miraculous and the Miracles of Jesus, lecture number three, The Rise of Science and Liberalism.